Simon, I was interested last week, we spoke about Kevin De Bruyne doing his own deal and now mm-hmm. on £385,000 a week, reportedly, at Manchester City. He and Raheem Sterling setting up their own management agencies in recent months. I mean, it seems like uh, these management agencies are becoming more and more uh, frequent and are becoming big disruptors to the market in the longer term. Which begs the question, is it now a lifespan to the traditional agent, as we know, and love them. Top agent Sky Andrew joins us this lunchtime. Sky, good afternoon. Good afternoon to uh, Mr. White and everyone's favourite chairman, Simon Jordan. <laughs> I can see where this is going to go. How have you been, Sky? I- I'm all right. Simon's got a better tan than me. What's going on? <laughs> the only person I know it's blood who's pressure. Got a tan it's, when it's cold. It's blood pressure, Sky, because I knew you were coming on to espouse us <laughs> of your views. So listen, That's right. t- tell me, tell I'm me. You, Jordan, I tell you. Is, is what I'm hearing really what I'm hearing? Are you saying that the, the life of uh, the football agent is now really much on a timer and that things are changing dramatically as we know it? No, I've said for a while, and this is why, you know, I set up my company in recent years as a management company because players need management. And there are too many agents that are not serving the, the player or serving their client, but serving themselves. So players are starting to wake up and think, what am I getting here? And if I'm not getting what I need, then I might as well do it myself. But I just think that that's... Uh, a process that's not going to last very long. Players are taking a step back and thinking about what they need. And in my opinion, what players need is at least one person around them that is outside of their bubble that can give them advice on timing, when to do things, how to structure things, and to be completely with them. Because unfortunately, there are double agents in the game where players are not sure whether or not they're, be, they're give, being given advice that's just for them. And that needs to change. Mm. Players are companies, they're industries. They earn, some of the top players earn more than small companies. So in that business, whilst you're relevant, you've got to have people around you that are fierce, that are utilising your relevancy on and off the pitch. I mean, it's interesting, Sky. I, I, I also notice you think a lack of trust has emerged in the the conventional agent-player relationship. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Um, trust in, in any relationship is important. And, and what, what's happening is that players are getting tax bills, for instance, and they don't know what the tax bills are for. And so that, that's a lack of trust because right from the get-go, the representative has to explain to a player what the repercussions are of signing a contract, what they're going to get on their P11D. If you spoke to 20 top players, do you know a lot of them don't know how much their agent gets? So there's this lack of trust between agents and players where agents are thinking, oh, you know, I don't want the player to know how much I'm getting. Um, oh, they, they might not want me to do the deal if they know how much is going on my P11D. And so there's this lack of trust where there isn't transparency. And what there needs to be is transparency. This is why, in my opinion, players need someone outside the bubble to manage their affairs and to even choose the right agents to do relevant deals. But the players need to know what's going on. They need full transparency. They need to know the repercussions of deals. They need to know what's going on, who's getting what. And for me... The lack of trust is players not knowing what's going on. See, Sky, this is all music to the ears of this man who owned a football club and has dealt with people like your good self in the past. Yeah, but... Is this the day you've been waiting for? But, Jim, it's also nonsense as well, Sky, because with the greatest respect in the world, the reasons why players are getting a tax bill on their P11D is because they don't pay for their agent's services... The clubs are paying for the player's agent rather than the player paying it for himself, and he's getting a benefit in kind. So he's getting something for nothing. He's getting somebody to rock in, negotiate his contract, and getting somebody else to pay for it. If the whole principle of agency relationships with players were players actually paid for agents in the first place, they might have a a slight, a a greater sense of entitlement about what they should and shouldn't get. What you're doing is you're moving the onus 
from a player having a relationship with an agent to a player having a relationship with a management company. You either, you, either have, you either have a good management company or a bad management company. You either have a good agent or a bad agent. All you're doing is moving the relationships from one site, from one environment to another. Is it as simple as that, Sky? Now, do you know what, Simon? Yeah, you speak very eloquently about a lot of stuff. But when it comes to agents, I think what you're doing is, is that you're headlining. And what? So you're, you're looking at what you're seeing and unfortunately, what people see in the headlines about agents, what agents are getting, Mini Rola, all this headlining stuff. Yep. But the industry has got thousands of agents, thousands. And 80% of agents don't make a living. And going back to the point about... How long may that continue? No, no, no. But, yeah, but that's just ignorance, isn't it? That's just you looking No, at, no, but hang on, Scott. Scott, can I just, if, can I just stop you, spend, you for a second if, when you say if, it's if ignorance? you spend six months investigating what actually goes on in no i spent 10 years sky here's where you can't here's where you can't say that sky you can have every viewer that you want but the one thing you can't do is accuse me of not being privy to how the processes work because i spent 10 years inside an industry dealing with agents you're privy, you privy at a level which was a minute percentage of agents why i'm telling no, it was you, hundreds of agents you know, sky from grassroots it was hundreds of agents sky sky it was hundreds of agents and agents and players Listen, I've been an agent 25 years. I know. I've seen what's, what, what's been going on. And what's going on at the moment is that there was a lack of trust between agents and, and players. But players now need to take responsibility of what is going on around yeah. them. But what's and the difference, what's the difference players, between a management company? And if, and if players are playing football and things are going well, yeah. they, they tend to not take too much notice of what's going on afterwards. And you know, when players finish their careers, some players are falling off the cliff. And what needs to happen now is that players need to take responsibility and hire at least one individual outside of their bubble. And pay them, yes? And pay them. Manage the situation and pay them. But they don't want to do that, Sky. They don't want to do that. They want everything for nothing and 10% off. So I understand no, your point of, of view. the tax situation, Simon. What's in, in entertainment, uh, um, a singer, uh, an actor, they can claim their agent's fees back against tax. Footballers can't claim their, their fees back against tax. Because that's of their employment contracts, right? Double taxation. Because of their employment so contracts. The player gets paid. But currently, but they currently they're not paying for their agent services. Agent. But they're not... Double taxation. Okay. But they're currently, they're not paying for their agent services. What they're doing is getting the taxation on a benefit. So the benefit of having an agent, you get it for nothing, but then you're paying a tax bill on something that you didn't pay for in the first place, but that perhaps you should have paid for. So yeah, but, what, but what's your overall take on what Sky is saying? By and large, top players are moving away from having an agent no. of their own, like De Bruyne and Sterling are doing, and moving into no, football well, management no, 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 companies. That, in not, other words, Sky's kind of talking what, down but, his but, own but industry. that's not what they're doing. What they're doing is they're leveraging their relationship to build a stable of players that they will represent as well. Anthony Joshua has got a management company that manages other fighters like Lawrence Acoli. Raheem Sterling and other players are using their influence to build a management company. They'll put intermediaries in there to run it, and they will then be agents for players. That's not what the management company situation is. What Sky is talking about is getting proper people around to advise footballers, not give them Rolexes to come and join their, their agency. You know what I'm talking about, Sky. right? And not give them incentives and buy them out of their contracts but give them proper guided advice once upon a time the only people that a footballer would trust was their agent i'd sit there with a footballer paying his wages and say, i don't trust you chairman i only trust him and i'm watching him sell him down the river being prepared to take a deal from me to get less wages for this player being prepared to punt him into every single car banking contract he can because he's getting a kickback out of it and now the now the now the and knowing that these agency world isn't right and knowing that some of these agents aren't to be trusted and the balance has now gone from what sky saying is football club owners are no longer the enemy it's becoming players relationships with agents and it's all because players have to pay for something and the moment they get it through their heads that good advice and good representation and good support costs something Something and they should have to pay for it, then you'll have a proper relationship with players and management companies. Is that fair, Sky? Is there an element of truth no, no, in no, that, no. Sky? Do the, play, do the players there, know they should pay more? No, Anything. what Simon just said there is, is actually a good point because I hate to admit that. I hate to admit that he makes anything. <laughs> but he made a good point there. You see, what's happening is that agents are trying to make players think that they don't have to pay. So then you've got one player saying to another player, yeah, well, you pay your agent. I don't pay my agent. So then it becomes almost like a dirty word to pay an agent. But what needs to happen is players need to understand the value of having good representation and that they have to pay for it. Once we get past that murky side 
and players are like, yeah, I understand that. How do you achieve that, Sky? Because that's the $64 million well, question, is it? We've got, we had a debate before you came on about football clubs being responsible for paying for player security. And if you, if you can't get players to be able to secure their own houses and value their own family, how are you going to get them to move into a territory yeah. where they've got to pay you to use their money to make money with? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you know, um, one of the biggest issues in football, and you alluded it to it earlier, you said Rolexes, one of the biggest issues in football is inducement. So you've got young players and families that are induced by agents giving them stuff. And then there comes a period where the player gets to a level where you can't induce the player anymore. But in the first instance, it has to be about quality of service. You have to have people to serve you. Players have got to understand that if you have a good person looking after you, you will make more money. You will make the right decisions. You will have a community uh, company, you will have great charity, great brand, everything. People underestimate the importance of the media. A lot of agents I'm seeing don't understand the importance of radio, TV, media. You, you've got to have a communication with them. You know, the media are the devil. The media is your way of communicating. Oh, to Sky, if you were here, you I would are. embrace you, I'm my your friend. Brandies. I'm with you. Sky, listen, peace is breaking out between you and Jordan. I think we should leave it at that while it is. Sky, great having you on board this lunchtime. Sky, Andrew, maybe the role of the conventional agent maybe isn't what it uh, used to be, and uh, the, the days of the conventional agent could well be numbered. Sky, thanks for joining us.